glad for that story. Amen. Because we know him, we know what love is. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. 1 John 3.16 Our deepest longing is to be loved and to love. Longing for rescue, longing for help, longing to be seen and heard, longing to be loved fully, without reservation, consistent love. Longing for a place to belong, someone to belong to a holy family to be enveloped in. But where do we find these things? Where must we look? Where does our help come from? Our help comes from the Lord, the one who made everything that is, including you and me. Psalm 121, 1 through 2. Our helper has come, our helper who is always leading us to Jesus, who has made way for us to belong to himself and his Father, to be a child in his holy family. Our longing is fulfilled by Jesus, who has given us a place with him, a seat in heaven, a place in his home. God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised up us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Jesus Christ Jesus. Ephesians 2, Ephesians 2, 4 through 7. As we light this candle of hope today, may we remember that we are now living in the age of his grace unending kindness and abounding love. We are seen and heard. We do belong to him, and every longing in our hearts is satisfied in him. Amen. Amen. 
Man. Okay. 
to you too this morning, but that's all right. You know, I'm sure that for those people who, you know, like to be accurately correct or technically correct, maybe wondering why that we did Advent beginning reading this Sunday, not next Sunday, because technically the calendar start next Sunday, but I just felt that, you know, there's nothing wrong with getting our hearts and minds on the right reason for the season. To turn our hearts and minds not only from a time of thanksgiving, but brother John, to a time of hope. Yeah. See, we, we live in a time, as we look around the world, Sister Sheila, we live in such a time when chaos and, and things are just happening everywhere you go. And people are troubled, Sister Liz, on every hand. There's not a home, nor a person, nor a family that is not being touched, Brother Frank, in these days and times in some way. And I know this morning that while the enemy is raging as hard as he can, you and I have to be reminded that the victory is still ours. Amen. Sister Brenda, we are not defeated, <clears throat> regardless of what the enemy may be doing, regardless of what the world may look like, regardless of uh, of what even the condition of the church may be in this day and hour, we are still not defeated. Because, Brother Al, we serve a God who is faithful. A God whom, according to the Word of God, is not slack concerning His promises, as some mean count slackness, Brother Pat. I'm glad this morning that, Sister Susan, that I realize along my journey, I cannot put my trust or my hope or my confidence in mankind, Brother Stewart. Because the very moment, the very hour that I do, I am greatly going to be disappointed. The very moment, Brother Kenny, that I let my eyes get upon mankind or upon people in general, and I begin to put my hope and my confidence and trust there, surely I guarantee you, Sister Bella, at some point, they're going to upset me. It's going to overwhelm me. And it will discourage me, Brother Theo, if I'm not careful. Because, Sister Cynthia, we know that no man in this earth is perfect. The only one that was perfect, Sister Crystal, his name is Jesus. And we know that he was hung on a cross and laid in a tomb and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father this morning. In him, in him alone. I put my trust, I put my confidence, and I find my hope and strength in Him. Because I'm going to tell you something this morning. If we was to look at the world according to the writer, he said, if my hope was in this world only, I'd be of all men most miserable. If we put our hope and our confidence and our trust in the world that we're living in right now, how disappointed would you be this morning? Because, Brother Jeff, it seems like on 
every hand. We can clearly see the scripture coming to pass when it talks about that because iniquity doth abound, the love of many wax code is clear to see that the love that people have for one another is completely different. One of the things that I had prided myself when I went away in the service <clears throat> was that when I met someone who had never been to southern West Virginia, well, we get a lot of bad names and bad titles because people look at us as dumb hillbillies and all these other things. Sister Liz, I can tell you this. Growing up in southern West Virginia, I saw the love of God. Not only in the holiday season, but Sister Brenda, I saw the love of God every day in the lives of people. Brother Frank, I saw neighbor, helping neighbor, not wondering what they're going to get out of it, but doing it because it's the genuine love of God. I can remember many times watching things happen along the journey. As, as a matter of fact, one of the greatest things that, that I think that I experienced was I was probably about 13, 14 years old, and I was living with my aunt and uncle at that time. There was something going on, and, and my cousin and I, there was a gentleman above us, a storm came through, and it, it just tore his roof off. And Brother Frank, he was up there by himself working, putting that back together. And my aunt says, you boys, you need to go up there and help that man. Sister Sheila, there wasn't a hesitation. There wasn't a question. There wasn't, oh, what are you going to pay me? It was, we need to get this done. See, in the world that God created for you and I, I preached a little bit about it last Sunday, about the power of unity and the power of loving one another and standing and fighting for each other. In the time that we live in, my greatest hope has grown to be come deeper and deeper in God. Sister Susan, there were times in my younger days that I put my trust and, and my hope in my own physical abilities at times, my own intellectual knowledge at times. I, I put my hope and my trust in a lot of things worldly, but did I realize, Sister Liz, as I became older, that God shows us the reality that we are not promised tomorrow? Brother Kenny, at any moment, at any time, our lives could change in an instant. But Brother Melvin, the one thing that God has shown me through it all is that He changes not. The Word of God says that He is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. See, Brother Theo, that's the kind of hope that we have this morning. In a God that regardless of what he experiences from this world, and believe me, he doesn't experience the love that he deserves from mankind. Sister McKenzie, this morning, there are many who do not even acknowledge his existence. There are many who fail to assemble themselves and worship his holy name. There are many who take his love for granted. My brother Jeff, <clears throat> the God that we serve is a God of unconditional love. Amen. See, Sister Brenda, while mankind conditions their love, well, if you do this for me, I'll do that for you. If you love me, I'll love you back. Aren't you glad that this morning that even though the Word of God says that He came to His own, but His own received Him not. Even though, Brother Pat, He came unto a people that He wanted to love and wanted to save and set free from sin, they chose to crucify Him on the cross of Calvary. But yet, Sister Crystal, that did not change His love for us. It's amazing this morning once you realize that your relationship with God is not based upon anyone else. Aren't you thankful for that this morning? Amen. Yeah. 
that you get to have that personal relationship with God. The Word of God tells us to let every man work out his own soul salvation with fear and trembling before the Lord. Aren't you glad this morning that whether your spouse, your children, your family, your friends, your neighbors, regardless of how they worship or don't worship God, aren't you glad this morning it does not impact your walk with Him? Because see, Sister Sheila, if it was based upon the way that man did things, why? I've been around a lot of families that, Brother Al, when somebody does something in the family, it disrupts the whole family to the point where everybody's turning against each other and no one is there for one another. Well, ain't that sad? <clears throat> but this morning, I serve a God who loves me so much that even when I come up short, you say, Pastor Perry, you come up short, oh, I'm just as human as everyone else. And sometimes I come up short, but Sister Liz, instead of God casting me out, God convicts my heart, chastises my life. He does. But he also picks me up, Brother Pat, and encourages me to keep going. I think about the story of Peter, and eventually I'm going to be in the book of Romans chapter 15, but I think about the story of Peter, how that Peter had the ability to trust and put his hope in Jesus. He said, Lord, if you bid me to come unto you, I can come. And we know, Brother Jeff, that Jesus told him to come, and he began to walk on the water, doing the impossible. See, do you remember how it felt when you came and you gave your life to the Lord? That freedom you felt from sin, that power, that love, that encouragement that you felt, that sister Velma, that you felt like you could go all the way and nothing could stop you. But I'm thankful this morning that one day I begin to recognize and realize the gift that God gave each and every one of us. I guarantee you this morning that everyone here and everyone listening in online could surely quote for me John 3.16. A scripture that stands out as the heartbeat of hope for all of mankind. For it says, for God so loved the world that he did what? That he gave his only begotten son. That whomsoever believeth in him, should not perish. Ain't that a hope to have this morning? The Word of God tells us that work that God began in us, He's going to continue to do until that day that He returns and takes us home. Aren't you glad this morning that you can have hope in a God like that? That you will not perish. But I like this. But that you'll have everlasting hope. Life. And not just any kind of life, but a life of joy and peace and strength, a life of freedom completely from the devil and all that he tries to do. I cannot wait, Brother Al, for that day. Now, I'm not in a hurry to leave, don't get me wrong. I want to stay around and make Cynthia's life a little bit more miserable for a little while longer. Now, she's gone. So I'll, I'll, I won't be in too much trouble. But boy, when that day comes, Brother Frank, when God calls us out of this world, do you know we're going to strip off everything that divides us from the love of God? We're going to strip off all that pain, all that struggle, all that heartache, all the temptations, all of sin. The Word of God tells us there's not going to be any curse when we get there. You're not going to have to worry about people telling lies and stirring up trouble. You're not going to have to worry about any of that stuff. And I can't even wrap my head around that, Brother Pat. How wonderful that's going to be to not have to worry about the enemy trying to attack you or discourage you. But to be able to stand in the presence of God throughout all eternity. 
is such a wonderful thing. You and I know this morning <clears throat> that this season is a time in which we should focus upon the greatest gift that mankind has ever received. The gift of Jesus Christ. Whom the word of God said came into this world and was born in a manger. For he had no room to lay his head. To one who came not to gain for himself. But came sacrificiously, Sister Liz, that you and I might gain the abundance blessings of God. Jesus says this, because I hear people say, well, I'd hate to be those people that took his life from him. Do you know this morning Jesus himself said, no man taketh my life from me, for I lay it down freely. He said, if I lay it down, I shall take it up again. See, it wasn't something, Brother Stewart, that he had to do. But it's something that he desired to do this morning. And when you recognize that God gave you a gift even when you didn't deserve it. Aren't you glad that it wasn't based upon the way people base Christmas today? You know, today, if you're a bad boy, Brother Frank, you get coal in your stocking. Aren't you glad this morning that's not the way God treated us? Even in our debts and our trespasses and sin, God still gave us the greatest gift that we could ever receive. An opportunity to be saved and set free. We are living in the moment in which the prophets and the people of old desired to see. Do you know they longed for that hope of that Savior to be born? Isaiah 9, chapter 9 begins to speak about His coming. Isaiah 9 and 6 says this, For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. This morning, as I think about the gift that God has given unto us, I want us to think about the gift that we're giving back to him. You know, the Word of God talked about those three wise men that came. And how the Word of God says that they came and they brought gifts. Precious gifts. That meant something to them that they wanted to bestow unto the King of Kings. Unto the Savior. At some point this year, we're going to do our... Uh, hanging at the green service and during that one of the things I'd like to try to figure out how to do is I'd like to find some small packages that everyone can have and bring to present as their gift unto the Lord. So what I want you to be praying about and thinking about is what if you had the ability to come and bring your gift unto God? What does that look like for you? What would you want to Dedicate unto God and say, Lord, here is my gift. This means more to me than I could ever imagine. But God, I desire to give it to you. An amazing moment, an amazing time that we get to have a chance to celebrate and show God our love. But then also this morning, while we celebrate the hope that we've received through Christ Jesus, we're also having hope this morning as we look toward that second coming. <laughs> when the Lord himself, according to 1 Thessalonians, I believe it is around chapter 4, when the Lord himself comes back and the call goes out, and Sister Sheila, the word of God tells us, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, And the dead in Christ shall rise first, and then we which are alive and remain shall be called up together to be with them to meet the Lord in the air. A coming hope, a gift that we can never repay. And the thing that you and I 
as the people who are saved today have to recognize and realize is that, Sister Sheila, this gift should mean even more to us as the Gentile people. Because before Jesus, Brother Pat, God's focus were only on the Jew. Aren't you glad that God met a man by the name of Paul on the road to Damascus and he calls him out to preach the gospel not only to the Jew, but unto the Gentile. The opportunity that we have this morning as we experience his unconditional love, a gift that come into our lives to bring a magnificent message. Let us look at Romans chapter 15 just for a little while this morning. He said, We then, who are strong, ought to bear the scruples or the infirmities of the weak, but not to please ourselves. What God has called us to do this morning, Brother Kenny, it's not something that we give. It's not a gift that we give to God and serve Him, Brother Frank, in order to, for ourselves to receive. Or to be that person who gets that praise and that glory from mankind. But this morning, Brother Stewart, we should desire to love one another, to encourage one another, and to help one another along the journey. Why? Because God loved us in a condition when we too did not deserve to be loved. When we, Brother Theo, had to be picked up and cleaned up. When we had to be forgiven of our sins. He says, let each of us please his neighbor for his good work, leading to edification. For even Christ did not please who? Himself. We know that Jesus Sister Liz, in many places, said he came to do the will of the Father. This morning, that's what I desire. Brother Jeff, I desire to do the will of the Father. Not that people may look at me and applaud me. But Brother John, I want to do the will of the Father this morning. Why? Because I know that there are people out there who are hurting, who are dying, Brother Melvin, and who need to be delivered. I know that there are people in our church that need to be encouraged, that need to be strengthened, and that need to overcome their challenges. And the only way that they're going to be set free from all of that, Sister Sheila, is when they know the real Jesus. The Word of God says, whom the Son sets free is free indeed. It's not by my might or my power this morning that anyone finds freedom. But it's by the power of God working through our lives that reaches the soul and changes them forevermore. He says, The reproaches of those who reproach you fell on me, he says. For whatever things were written before were written for our learning that we, through the patience and comfort of the Scripture, might have hope. See, we are blessed this morning because we have the ability. I don't know anyone in here this morning. If you don't, please let me know and I'll make sure that we do. I don't know any of us, Brother Frank, that doesn't own our own Bible. Who cannot sit down at any moment in any time and read the scripture. But Brother Kenny, there are people in other countries this morning, by the thousands, who do not have their own Bible. Who do not have the opportunity, as you and I do, to be able to sit down and read God's word and hear God speak to their lives from their Bible. Brother Theo, we are blessed that we get the opportunity to come to the house of God, to hear the word of God, because I'm not going to preach to you anything else but God's word. 
Not only that, we get to find faith and hope from the power of that word. And see, he says, through this, we receive the hope that we need in this day and hour. Because be honest with me this morning. How many of you would have struggled along life's journey if you did not know God's truth? How many of you this morning would have felt unloved, unwanted? Would you, you'd have felt as if there was no place for you. You would have felt as if there was no genuine hope. And you know what this morning? That's what a lot of people in the world are experiencing right now. Sadly, every day in my job, I get to see people who've lost all hope, Brother John. And they think that it would be better for them not to even be alive in this world anymore. We are blessed with the fact, Brother Stewart, not only do we get to read the Word or hear the Word, but we know this Word applies to us. And see, that's the good thing, Brother Pat, knowing that these promises are given to you and I. He says, Now may the God of patience and comfort grant you to be like-minded toward one another according to Christ Jesus. That you may with one mind <laughs> and one mouth glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, receive one another just as Christ also received us to the glory of God. Now I say that Jesus Christ has become a servant to the circumcision for the truth of God. To confirm the promises made to the fathers. And that the Gentiles. Here you are church. And that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy as it is written. He says for this reason I will confess to you among the Gentiles and sing your name. And again he says rejoice O Gentiles. With his people. And again. Praise the Lord. All you Gentiles. Love him. All you peoples. And again Isaiah says. There shall be a root of Jesse. And he who shall rise. To reign over the Gentiles. And him the Gentiles. Shall have hope. Aren't you glad this morning. That God didn't just leave us out. But God opened the door and made a way for us. Sister Cynthia, God did not have to include us. But Sister McKenzie, I'm so glad that he did. I'm so glad that his heart opened up unto the Gentile people. And you and I have a chance to receive the blessings of God. See, Scripture doesn't present us as an outcast. It doesn't present us as a side family. But aren't you glad this morning that we have been adopted or grafted in to the genuine family of God? Amen. I'm an heir and a joint heir with Christ Jesus because of his blood. This morning, I can stand and know beyond a shadow of a doubt that if I leave this world before I get home, I know where my eternal destination will be. I like verse 13. It says, Now, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. This season doesn't bring me joy because I think that I'm going to get presents under a tree. It doesn't bring me joy because I think that somebody's going to do something special. This time of year reminds me of the great hope that I have through Jesus Christ. He says, now... I myself am confident concerning you, my brother, 
that you also are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge, able also to admonish one another. Nevertheless, brethren, I have written more boldly to you on some point, <coughs> as reminding you because of the grace given to me by God, that I might be a minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel, that the offering of the Gentiles might be acceptable, sanctified by the Holy Spirit. Brother Melvin, I am so thankful this morning for whatever reason God chose me to be able to have the gift of being able to be a part of not only of the family of God, but also that he saw fit to call me to preach and teach the gospel of truth. And Sister Liz, I take that very serious this morning. Because let me tell you something. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that this word has power to deliver and set people free. I know, John, that this word has the ability to take that broken heart and put it back together. To take that blackened heart and make it white as snow. To take that sinner and turn them into a saint. To take that one that is wandering and bring them back home. Brother Kenny, I cannot understand why anyone would want to preach or teach anything else other than God's holy word. He says, therefore, I have reason to glory in Christ Jesus in the things which pertain to God. For I will not dare to speak of any of those things which Christ has not accomplished through me in word and deed to make the Gentiles obedient. Let me tell you something this morning, church. Everything that I feel that God has given me to preach and teach, I only give what I feel God has given in order for you to receive. Because let me tell you something. You're not going to be obedient just because Pastor Perry said so. Let's be honest. My own kids ain't obedient just because Dad says so. But there has to be something, Brother Theo, that gets a hold of your life and changes you and gives you a desire to want to be obedient unto him. Amen. You see, that's what the power of God's word will do for you. It'll reach into your life and cause you to desire to be pleasing unto God. He said, in mighty signs and wonders, by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and around about to Lycurium, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. And so I have made it my aim, this is my desire, to preach the gospel, not where Christ was named, least I should build on another man's foundation, but as it is written, to whom he was not announced, they shall see, and those who have not heard shall understand. He said, Brother Pat, I have the aim and the desire to go into all the Gentile places and preach the gospel of truth. See, Brother Jeff, that's my desire this morning. That's been, always been my desire since God called me to preach. It's not about titles or positions or places. I'll go and preach the word of God anywhere that God opens the door. I'm not worried about two or ten thousand and two. What I want to do is be obedient to the preaching of God's word. Why? Because let me tell you something. The word of God says where the spirit of God is, there is liberty. There's a freedom from the world and from the hold of sin and the hold of darkness that we need to experience this morning. He says, for this reason, I also have been much hindered from coming to you, but now no longer having a place in these parts and having a great desire these many years to come to you. Whenever I journey to Spain, I shall come to you for I hope to see you on my journey and to be helped on my way there by you. <laughs> At first, I may enjoy your company for a while. But now, 
I am going to Jerusalem to minister to the saints. For it pleased those from Macedonia and Achaia to make a certain contribution for the poor among the saints who are in Jerusalem. Can I make just a little comment about that this morning? One of the things that really, really excites me about Gordon Road Church of God, we may be small, but we have a heart's desire to serve. And Brother Stewart, what we get to do with the shoe boxes and other ministries to the homeless and different ones, let me tell you something. It doesn't have to be a tremendous gift as the world. I think about that section of scripture when Jesus was sitting by watching people put in and those who had plenty put in plenty. But it reminds me of that, one, of that woman who was poor, Sister Liz, who put in all that she had. And the word of God said that Jesus told his disciples that she gave more than them all. Guys, this morning, as long as we are obedient to God and we desire to serve and serve others so that they too might receive the gospel, let me tell you something this morning, church. We are blessed. And I am thankful that we have a church that have a mission mindset to reach others as best we can. He says... Why? He said, it pleased them indeed, and they are their debtors. For if the Gentiles had been partakers of their spiritual things, their duty also was to minister to them in material things. Therefore, when I have performed this and have sealed to them this fruit, I shall go by the way of you to Spain. He said, but I know that when I come to you, I shall come in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ. Now I beg you, brethren, through the Lord Jesus Christ and through the love of the Spirit, that you strive together with me in prayer to God for me, <clears throat> that I may be delivered from those in Judea who do not believe, and that my service for Jerusalem may be acceptable to the saints. Well, let me tell you, if you don't have anyone else to pray for this morning, I need all the prayers that you can give me. Because every day, Brother Pat, just like you, I face many, many challenges. Many, many things happen, Sister Sheila, to try to discourage, to try to stop, to try to prevent. But I'm thankful this morning that the power of the prayers of the saints as they continue to come help me in my journey to continue serving God in the way that he has called me to serve. He says that I may come to you with joy by the will of God and may be refreshed together with you. Now the God of peace be with you all. Amen. I'm thankful. And I'm going to be in Revelation 21 here in a minute. Revelation 21. Oh, now preacher, you're getting in that scary book. That's all right. Revelation 21. But this morning, I think about the gift that we have. And the comfort that we find in loving God and loving each other. The greatest gift of hope. That we found this morning through our faith in God's plan is something that should strengthen you, encourage you, and cause you to have peace and joy. The Word of God talks about a peace that surpasses all understanding. We can stand today in this world of sin <clears throat> and boldly proclaim the true meaning of this season. The true meaning, again, it's not about the trees and the presents and all those things. The true meaning is that God shared the greatest gift to mankind of his only begotten son. A gift that opened the door that you and I might be saved. We cling this morning to the hope of God. And because it expresses to us several things. Number one, 
The hope of God expresses to us that we can have confidence. The Word of God said that when we are absent from the body, we are present with the Lord. We can have the confidence in knowing that when we leave this world, that we'll enter an eternal place of peace and rest. A place, Brother Kenny, where we'll no longer be burdened by sin and darkness that dwells in this world. A place where we'll live, Brother Jeff, forevermore. We sing the song sometimes that there'll be no graves in that kingdom. Secondly, it pronounces, this hope pronounces us of that day in which Jesus is going to return. Sister Crystal, I know that a lot of individuals today are living as if Jesus is not going to return. Living. Brother Theo, as if Jesus is not going to come back for another million years. But Brother Pat, the Word of God says that no man knows the day or the hour. He said, not even the angels of heaven know that day in which the Lord is going to return. Number one. Number two. Sister Liz, I may leave here before Jesus comes. And if I leave before his come, that is him coming for me. We have to be prepared and we should find our hope in the fact that he is coming. Because Sister Brenda, the pathway that this world is heading down, could you imagine what this world would be like, Brother Frank, if God let it exist for another thousand years? I can't even imagine how horrible and ugly this world will be. I'm glad this morning that I find hope in the fact that God knows the day in which the sun needs to come. The day in which all people of God will escape this world and enter into a new world. I like what the Word of God says, that there'll be a day when there'll be a new heaven and a new earth. A place, Sister Crystal, not where sin and Satan would dwell, but where the righteousness of God will dwell forevermore. See, ever since sin entered into mankind, do you know that mankind has searched for a place of genuine rest and peace? As a matter of fact, Brother Kenny, there's been many times when false peace has come on the scene, but the truth has broken and re they realize that there is no genuine peace in this world. When our forefathers came to America, they came searching for a place of peace, didn't they? A place in which they could worship God with freedom. Ain't it amazing how that less than 300 years later, that Brother Stewart, that we pretty much give it all back to the enemy just about. Why? Because, Sister Brenda, this world is not our home. This is not a place in which we should be getting comfortable in. This is not a place, the Word of God tells us, that we should not lay our treasures up on earth where moth and rust dust corrupt and thieves break through and steal. He said that instead we should be laying up treasures in heaven. See, I'm seeking for a place of genuine rest. But Sister Crystal, even at a small young age, I dream about that place and living forever and ever. And boy, let me tell you, at the age of 10, 11, and 12, trying to wrap your brain around living forever whoo, was an overwhelming thing sometimes. I couldn't imagine <clears throat> what it would even be like. As a matter of fact, it's hard for people to even imagine right now such a place. You know, 1 Corinthians Chapter 2, verse 9 says this. It says, But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Brother Al, when we try to share with the world that we're going to a place where there's no sin, the world can't comprehend that. Why? Because we're people of we need to see it in the physical. 
Huh? We adopt the slogan in Missouri, ain't it? Missouri said that they're the show me state, show me. We act like the Thomas, don't we? That doubting Thomas, he said, lest I put my own finger and I touch those nail scars in the hand and pierce his eye. He said, I'll not believe. Aren't you glad when Jesus said, Blessed are they who have not seen but yet believe. Here's the good thing about the word though. God doesn't leave us blinded to the truth of what's to come. Because verse 10 of that, this is the scripture that a lot of people lose off. It said, but God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. That's why I want you to look at Revelation chapter 21 with me this morning. A section of scripture that's going to talk about this newness, this place, in just a small little bit of time. Brother Jeff, it says in verse 21, he said, Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also, there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem coming down, out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. For God himself will be with them and be their God. Brother Frank, I can't even imagine what well, that's going to be like, Brother Pat, because the Word of God says that no man has looked upon God and lived. As a matter of fact, there was one man of old who wanted to see God, Brother Theo, and God hid him in the cleft of the rock, and he only got to see the hinder parts of God because he could not look on his fullness. There's coming a day when you and I are going to put off this mortal and put on that immortal body, we are going to put on that spiritual body that will allow us to stand in the presence of the mighty God and dwell in His joy forever. The Word of God tells us that we'll have the name of God upon our foreheads. It says, And God will wipe every tear from their eyes. Said there shall be no more death. Nor sorrow. Nor crying. There shall be no more pain. For the former things have passed away. Well don't that sound good? Huh? Amen. All of your brokenness. All of your pain. All of your struggles. Huh? A few of us except for Theo. He's still young. We understand what it's like for this body to start feeling some things, don't we? Huh? Waking up with arthritis and bensitis and all the other great stuff that we get as we begin to age. I don't think Crystal feels that neither. She pops around pretty good. <laughs> but see, we understand what it means. My mom and I were talking just the other day, she says, I can remember when I could do all of this in a few days. Now it takes me forever. Boy, and let me tell you, I, I connect with that wholeheartedly this morning. What I used to get done in a day takes me about a month or two. Cynthia says, amen. But see, all of this is just a reminder that this world is not where we belong, is it? Amen. This is not what we should be longing for and striving for. I long for that day to be in that city with Sister Sheila that God wipes all the tears from my eyes. Not because just of the world, but all the pain and the suffering and struggle. When you genuinely look at the brokenness of man and the hope that sin has on people's lives. I can tell you something this morning. I can't help but shed a tear. 
to know this morning that someone's baby, someone's family, someone's friend has left this world without Jesus. That breaks my heart. But I know that there's coming a day when Brother Theo, when we won't have to worry about being separated from them anymore. When we won't have to worry about the sorrows and the struggles of life. Then we won't have to worry about some crazy government making rules and decisions for us that aren't good for us. Well, that would be a great day, won't it? I won't get on politics this morning. I'll leave it alone. He says, Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Right, for these words are true and faithful. My friend, that's something to have hope in. That's something to desire, something to look forward to, something we can trust this morning. He says, And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give of the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. I like that scripture that says, he that endure to the end. Huh? We've got to endure, don't we? Because when we endure with Christ Jesus, we'll reign with him this morning. Right now, church, it may be painful. It may be challenging. It may even be overwhelming at times. But church, we've got to hold on because it's going to be worth it after all. I love that song we sing. The payday at the end of the road. What a payday that's going to be. He says, but the cowardly, and this ain't my words, this is, I'm reading it this morning where somebody gets upset, the preacher, but the cowardly, the unbelieving, the abominable, the murderers, the sexual immoral, the sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars <coughs> shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Now we know that the Word of God talks about the great white throne and how that Everyone, small and great, will stand before God and be judged. And how all those whose names are not written in the Lamb's Book of Life will be cast into that second death. Boy, that's pretty scary to me. Have you ever really thought about the second death that people are going to face? A pain and a suffering, the Word of God says, that it's without end. Says one scripture says the smoke of their torment arises forever and ever. One scripture says where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. Brother Theo, I know that there's a lot of people out there, a lot of religions that teach that hell is temporary. Some teach that they're crystal. That hell's only a place that you go to for a little while and your sins are purged and then you get to go to heaven. Boy, wouldn't that be nice? But you don't. Some have even taught that those who don't make it to heaven are just utterly destroyed. It just no longer exists. That would be nice too. But it's not true. There is a second death that's eternal for all of them that don't know the Lord. And Brother Pat, it's not up to me. It's not up to any of us. But it's up to God this morning who decides and judges and determines who goes in. He says, <clears throat> then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls filled, the seven last plagues, came to me and talked with me, saying, 
Come, and I will show you the bride, which is the Lamb's wife. We know this morning, church, that we as the church are the bride of Christ. You know that this morning. Sorry, guys. You're a bride. But we are the bride of Christ. He said, and he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me the great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. Having the glory of God, her light was like a most precious stone, like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. <clears throat> also she had a great and high wall with twelve gates and twelve angels at the gate and the names written on them which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. Aren't you glad I'm not going to stop preaching on all of it? You can amen. It said three gates on the east and three gates on the north, three gates on the south and three gates on the west. Now the wall of the city had twelve foundations. On them were the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. And he who talked with me had a gold ring to measure the city, its gates, and its wall. And the city is laid out as a square. Its length is as great as its breadth. And he measured the city with the reed, 12,000 furlongs. Its length, breadth, and height are equal. Then he measured its walls. And 140 cubits, according to the measure of a man, that is, of an angel. The construction of its wall was of jasper, and the city was pure gold, like clear glass. The foundations of the wall of the city were adorned with all kinds of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, and the third chalcedony, and the fourth an emerald, and the fifth sardonyx, and the sixth sardius, and the seventh chrysolite, and the eighth barrel, and the ninth topaz, and the tenth charis brass, and the eleventh jacinth, and the twelfth amith. And twelve gates were twelve pearls, each individual gate of one pearl. I can't even imagine that. And the street of the city was pure gold, like transparent glass. He said, but I saw no temple in it. For the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. The city had no need of the sun or of the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God illuminated it. The light is its, the Lamb is its light. Ain't that amazing? No moon, no sun, but God and the Lamb will light the city. And the nations of those who are saved shall walk in its light and the kings of the earth bring their glory and honor into it. Its gates shall not be shut at all by day. There shall be no night there. And so for those of you who don't like daylight saving time, you ain't got to worry about that, right? It's going to be day all the time there. It said, And they shall bring the glory and the honor of the nations to it, but there shall by no means enter in anything that defiles or causes an abomination or a lie, but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. What a great hope that we have this morning. That one day we're going to leave this place and enter into a kingdom, Brother Theo, that we can't even fully wrap our brain around. I can't imagine how God does all of the things that he's going to do. But I'll be honest with you, Brother Pat, I can't even wrap my brain around all the things that God's already done, even in this world. But we are born to a place far greater and far better than anything that we've ever seen or could imagine. This morning, as Brother Al comes, I want to invite you this morning to do two things. I want you to come and I want you to offer unto God this morning your praise, your appreciation, and your thankfulness for the gift that we've already received. But I also want us to come and ask Him for the strength 
and the encouragement and the ability to hold on until that next gift comes when he returns for us to take us home. As Brother Al Nem comes this morning, I want to invite you to gather around the altar with us this morning as we begin to seek God. Let us come.